we're going to use the power series methods to solve y double prime plus 2x cubed y equals 0 at the point x sub 0 equals 0. Because we want the power series centered at x equals 0, we begin by letting y equal the power series to sum from k equals 0 to infinity of a sub k times x to the power of k. And now we need to work on determining y double prime because we have y double prime in the differential equation. We first find y prime by differentiating the power series for y with respect to x. However, since the first term of y is the constant a sub zero and the derivative is zero, we have y prime equals the sum from k equals one to infinity, not k equals zero to infinity, of k times a sub k times x to the power of k minus one. And now we differentiate the power series for y prime to determine the power series for y double prime. However, once again, the first term of y prime is a constant, and since the derivative is zero, y double prime is equal to the sum from k equals two to infinity of k times k minus one times a sub k times x to the power of k minus two. And now I perform substitution into the differential equation. Since y double prime plus two x cubed y equals zero, performing substitution, we know the power series for y double prime plus two x cubed times the power series for y must equal zero. The first term of the power series for y double prime is a constant. Notice when k is equal to two, we have two times one times a sub two times x to the zero, which is two a sub two. Let's rewrite this as two a sub two plus the sum from k equals three to infinity of k times k minus one times a sub k times x to the power of k minus two. Let's also distribute two x cubed into the power series for y. This gives us a sum from k equals zero to infinity of two a sub k times x to the power of k plus three equals zero. We want these two sums to have the same lower limit as well as the same exponent on x. So what we're gonna do now is find the first two terms of this power series, which will make the lower limit of the sum k equals five, and then we'll re-index the sum on the right by replacing k with k minus five. So notice when k is equal to three, we have three times two times a sub three times x to the first, and when k equals four, we have four times three times a sub four times x squared. So we can write this as, we still have the two a sub two, and then plus six a sub three x, plus 12 a sub four x squared, and then plus a sum from k equals five to infinity of k times k minus one, times a sub k, times x to the power of k minus two. And now re-indexing the power series here on the right, we replace k with k minus five, which gives us a sum from k equals five to infinity of two times a sub k minus five times x to the power of k minus two. Notice now the lower limits of the sums are both k equals five, and the exponents on the x are both k minus two. And since all this on the left is equal to zero, all the coefficients on the left must equal zero. Starting with two a sub two plus six a sub three x plus 12 a sub four x squared, we now know that a sub two, a sub three, and a sub four are all zero. Now looking at the power series, notice the coefficients are k times k minus one times a sub k plus two times a sub k minus five, which indicates that sum must equal zero, and if we solve this for a sub k, we have the recurrence relation a sub k equals negative two a sub k minus five divided by the product of k and k minus one. And now let's continue on the next slide. Looking at this recurrence relation, and also recognizing that a sub two, a sub three, and a sub four are all zero, because we have a sub k on the left and a sub k minus five on the right, the coefficients jump in steps of five. Notice to find a sub seven, we have a sub seven equals negative two times a sub two, but a sub two is zero, and therefore a sub seven is zero. Similarly, if we want to find a sub eight, a sub eight is equal to negative two times a sub three, but a sub three is zero. We have the same issue with a sub nine and so on. This indicates we can also conclude that a sub five n plus two equals zero, a sub five n plus three equals zero, and a sub five n plus four equals zero. Again, this is because of the recurrence relation and because the coefficients jump in steps of five. Because we know a sub two through a sub four are zero, let's find a sub five using the recurrence relation a sub five is equal to negative two times a sub zero divided by the product of five and four. Simplifying, we have a sub five equals negative a sub zero divided by 10, where a sub zero is an arbitrary constant. 
And now let's find a sub six. a sub six is equal to negative two times a sub one divided by the product of six and five. Simplifying, we have a sub six equals negative a sub one divided by 15. And once again, a sub one is an arbitrary constant. In fact, for the remaining coefficients, we'll write them in terms of a sub zero or a sub one. But the next three coefficients are all zero. a sub seven, a sub eight, and a sub nine are all zero because they fit the form of a sub five n plus two, a sub five n plus three, and a sub five n plus four. So we jump to a sub 10, where a sub 10 is equal to negative two times a sub five divided by the product of 10 and nine. Simplifying, we have negative a sub five divided by 45. And since a sub five is equal to negative a sub zero divided by 10, we perform a substitution for a sub five, which gives us a sub 10 equals the opposite of negative a sub zero divided by the product of 45 and 10, giving us a sub 10 equals a sub zero divided by 450. And now we'll find a sub 11, which is equal to negative two times a sub six divided by the product of 11 and 10. Simplifying, we have negative a sub six divided by 55, but a sub six is equal to negative a sub one divided by 15. Performing the substitution and simplifying, we have a sub 11 equals a sub one divided by 825. Once again, the next three coefficients are zero because they fit the form of the coefficients that are all equal to zero. Let's find two more coefficients. Let's find a sub 15 and a sub 16. A sub 15 is equal to negative two a sub 10 divided by the product of 15 and 14. Simplifying, we have negative a sub 10 divided by 105 and a sub 10 is equal to a sub zero divided by 450. Performing the substitution and simplifying, we have a sub 15 equals negative a sub zero divided by 47,250. And finally, a sub 16 is equal to negative two a sub 11 divided by the product of 16 and 15. Simplifying and performing substitution where a sub 11 is equal to a sub one divided by 825, we have a sub 16 equals negative a sub one divided by 99,000. And now let's go ahead and write our power series solution. Recall the subscript on A does indicate the exponent on X. So we begin with Y of X equals A sub zero, an arbitrary constant, plus A sub one times X, where A sub one is also an arbitrary constant. And notice how for A sub one, the exponent on X is equal to one. Next we have three zero coefficients, A sub two, three sub four. So we move to a sub five, which is equal to negative a sub zero divided by 10, giving us minus a sub zero divided by 10 times x to the fifth. A sub six is equal to negative a sub one divided by 15, which gives us minus a sub one divided by 15 times x to the sixth. And then we have three more zero coefficients, and we jump to a sub 10, which is equal to a sub zero divided by 450, giving us plus a sub zero divided by 450 times x to the 10th plus a sub 11 is a sub one divided by 825, giving us plus a sub one divided by 825, x to the 11th. We have three more zero coefficients. A sub 15 is equal to negative a sub zero divided by 47,250, giving us minus a sub zero divided by 47,250, x to the 15th. A sub 16 is negative a sub one divided by 99,000, giving us minus a sub one divided by 99,000 times x to the 16th and so on. This is our power series solution. I hope you found this helpful.